are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the College Loop Podcast, episode 141 of the College Loop Podcast. I am Dylan Mark at Yablo Tank on Twitter slash X. And of course, I am joined today, Mr. Colin Byersdorf. Colin, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Just got finished watching a little Auburn basketball up here in Huntsville. So good night. Yeah, great night because every Auburn team that played tonight won. Uh, one of them way more than the other. Uh, women's basketball absolutely demolishing Alabama State, but more on that in a second. We're going to kick it right into football news as Auburn has lost another player, not well, lost two more, two, lost two players, one to the draft, one to the portal. But starting off, Marcus Harris has announced that he will not be returning to Auburn in 2024. He will be entering his name into the NFL draft, one of Auburn's best defensive players from this past season. And I know he led the team in sacks. I'm currently trying to get his uh, stat line pulled up as I'm typing and rambling and rambling and rambling on. Hey, Colin, can you uh, talk for a little bit while I find this? Yeah, um, you know, obviously – more power to him. Never to get mad when a player is going to the draft. Uh, Marcus Harris had one hell of a year. Had a lot of tackles. Dylan's going to tell you how many tackles uh, right here real quick. Yeah, but, so um, he's got 40 tackles on the year, seven sacks, had a pass deflection, and had a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. First team all SEC PFF. But not <laughs> – on the, I think he was second team on the AP, and then all the SEC really stares, and they just suck. So the SEC sucks because they did not put him on the first team nor the second team, and I don't even think they put him on the third team. And I refuse to believe that there are six defensive tackles better than Marcus Harris, and I believe he's also going to be a guy we're going to hear very soon in the draft, as in round two, round three ish zone. Uh, definitely a. Uh, Target that most teams are going to be looking at. Uh, high motor, strong, fast defensive tackle, kind of going in at 6'3", 295. It's going to be a guy that people are going to be looking at. If I'm looking for a guy who's going to have the biggest jump in a like a pro day or a combine situation, Marcus Harris is who I'm looking at right there. Uh, but best of luck to him. Uh, he's going to be great. And I can't lie, I'm a little disappointed in the fact that he chose not to play a year with his little brother, uh, Malik Blockton. Because it'd been really fun to see a uh, brother duo tack- sacking quarterbacks together. That would have been a lot of fun to watch. But sadly, he was going to make a lot of money in the NFL. And another player who left the team yesterday is Austin Osbury, a one of the, I think he transitioned to safety this past year. Uh, didn't really see a lot of playing time. Uh, just a guy, he got one tackle on the year. And really, all the time we really saw, uh, kind of wedged down deep in the depth chart. I this one, I, I think of all the transfer outs, this one probably hurt me the worst out of the eight or nine now, strictly because this is a guy who had a lot of upside, didn't get a lot of playing time because of his you know, how young he was. But with the corners and safeties coming into this uh, from this recruiting class, not a big loss here. How many tackles is that that put the Auburn defense transferring out at now, Dylan? Uh, I believe six. There you go. Yeah, I'm trying to math check that real quick, but I believe <laughs> we've not gotten a lot that lost out. I think it was so Osbury got one, Marquise Gilbert got one, and then Anish, Anish I can never remember his name, Sledge got none. And I'm trying to remember the other one. It was. Uh, I think the other one got three, and then that averaged out to like six was like the total. But not a lot of defensive production lost in the draft thus far. The only reason Austin Osbury hurts because he was a developmental piece who could have been good in a couple of years. Didn't really want to spend that time on the bench, even though Auburn, since Auburn's bringing in a lot of talent in that position group. And I can't really fret over it because losing players for the in the secondary just means that our secondary is too good for a good player to get playing time. I mean, he'll he'll have fun at like. Stanford. I'm sure he'll he'll go his he'll go former Pac-12. That's my my expert prediction there. Former Pac-12 is is a statement, and I hate that the Pac-12 is doing what they're doing. I've heard people say he might go back go to LSU because he was a flip that Auburn got from LSU that 
Uh, I believe Brian Harson was able to flip from LSU. Crazy sentence you just said right there. <laughs> Brian Harson was able to recruit someone away from LSU and spent all of his talent on getting a guy who never really got a chance to play. Uh, thank you, uh, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's that makes eight total Tigers who are currently in the transfer portal. And again, uh, outside of Osbury just being developmental, can't really say we've lost anybody of, of true value to this team's future. Uh, and speaking of which, Tyler from uh, it's nine, nine, because Wilkie did not also enter the transfer portal. I, I, we, oh, we didn't mention him because he happened the day of. Wilkie did not also enter the portal as well. But nine outgoing transfers, one of them have decided on their transfer donation. Uh, t- transfer destination as Tyler Fromm has announced that he is going to be a Georgia Southern Eagle. And I know somewhere, somewhere, or some someplace somewhere, John Conley, friend of the show, and known Georgia Southern alum, is probably very okay with having a Auburn player go to the go to his uh, favorite school. Yeah, they get a, a big old tight end that certainly can block and can catch a couple passes as well. So I'm sure he'll fit right in at Georgia Southern. Yeah, and then lastly, Anish Sledge has also announced his commitment to the Illinois Illini. So you lose a couple of players. One of them boosts your, boost your team up uh, in recruiting because you're sending a guy to the draft. Another one going to find his place elsewhere. Wish them both the best of luck. And speaking of adding players, it is a less than a week away that Auburn is going to add some new faces to this roster for the 2024 season as the current current number 11 class in the country per 24-7 is looking to add, right now, potentially, I believe 19 names because Blake Blockton has already signed his NLI. So 19 players are awaiting their chance to sign that lovely, lovely paper that says that they're going to be taking their talents to Auburn University officially. And is there anybody, uh, is there anybody that we should be worried about, Colin, that you think we should mention? I mean, I feel like the obvious one right now is is Perry Thompson. I don't think uh, I'm personally worried. I feel like that he, he's pretty locked in Auburn, but he, he is posting stuff, you know, with Auburn and Alabama and he wants to to draw attention to it and more power to him. But uh, I think he's an Auburn lock here, but I'm ready to get some, some names on some papers and, and have it all be done. Yeah. I'm ready to have the graphics all ready to go, have them all ready. As, and as soon as the, the papers get signed, it go up on the social medias. Cam Coleman, he, he, I think he's a lock. Perry Thompson. I think he is just trolling everybody. He's trying to scare, give a, all of us heart attacks so he can relieve us all in the end with when he signs his paper with Auburn. I even said he's probably going to be one of the – if he continues it into the signing day, I'm just seeing him picking up the Bama hat, throwing it, and then picking up the Auburn hat or doing something along those lines. Maybe throwing both of them and then just ripping up ripping up in his like shirt for an Auburn jersey. Something, something like that's going to happen with Perry Thompson, and it's going to be hilarious because, again, I think he's an Auburn lock. Jamonta Waller. Really hoping that he's bringing along Elgin McRae. Uh, that would be sick. Uh, but yeah, Auburn Lock, DeMarcus Riddick, Auburn Lock. You can ask with Grandma. She agrees. Yes, Auburn Lock. Ask Grandma. Uh, I need Willie Riddick to sign the NLI too. That way I know that she's also going to be on the team in 2020. Dude, l- let her put some pads on and see what she can do. <laughs> hey, she might be better than Wesley Signer. But yikes. <laughs> Uh, looking at Walker White, Joseph Phillips, DeAndre Carter, Bryce Kane, Amon Lane, Jalen Crawford, Martavius Collins, Malcolm Simmons, Blake Blockton's already signed his, Kinsley Faustin, TJ Lindsay, Demetrius Nicholas, Caleb Harris, Laquan Robinson, D'Angelo Barber, and Seth Wilfred are all currently Auburn commits. That the only person that I have not heard a lot about since he committed was Martavius Collins, but I still think he's pretty still. He, I think he's still with Auburn. Uh, I just have not, he's just not been as vocal as some of the other players have been in this class, but it's going to be a great class. Hopefully LJ and another guy with the, with the, with the J and his first name 
can uh, find their way to the Auburn NLI paper and sign their intention to play for the Auburn Tigers. That way this class can be... Clyde, if I were to ask you, mm-hmm. what what ranking would you say that this class is going to be by, let's say, Thursday morning? Just give everybody time. Mm. So we're sitting at 11 right now. Sitting at 11. I think we can make a push for for that 10 spot. I think we're moving up one. Putting ourselves right in the mix. So I'd like to say if LJ McCray were to potentially bring his talents to Auburn University, that would push Auburn up to the number five class in the country. I think Auburn might finish that top five. I mean, that's certainly a possibility. Well, I mean, truly, you're only, based off the point scale that 24-7 has, you're eight points away from from, uh, getting that top five spot. Especially because if you take LJ McCray, Florida doesn't have him anymore, which, is he still committed to Florida? I don't even know if he's still committed to Florida anymore. Oh, yeah, he is. Never mind. He's committed. He's still committed. Yeah, I'm. I'm just dumb. If you take if you take a guy from Florida like that, Florida's going to drop, and then you're going to have plenty of space to just hop back into that spot, and then be right there behind Alabama. Uh, just to give them some more stuff to worry about. Uh, other players uh, have been talked about. Ryan Williams. Fun Instagram live. That's for that's for sure. Great Instagram live. Uh, shout out to Connor, uh, whoever that whoever the kid is, for hopping in. I need the backstory. I need the backstory for why that kid was able to invite himself on and and speak I, wonders for why they, for why Ryan Williams should flip. I just assume he's seeing he's seeing what is it? Icy Kai, Simp, and uh, Eugene Asante were all in there recruiting Ryan Williams. And our boy Connor gets in there and he starts spitting facts. Connor knows ball. I don't know what to say. And he was um, like, Auburn's, Auburn's got traditions. We got the Eagle. We got tumors. <laughs> and he was going on and on and on about everything Auburn's got. And he was like, he even, I think he even mentioned at the end of it. He said, if you go, if you come here or if you go there, we're going to find you. <laughs> so I know he was out, like, the coaches will love you here. The coaches won't love you over there. The fans will love you here. The fans won't love you over there. Uh, I, I hope Connor is uh, – his dream job definitely is a recruiting analyst for Auburn University. I, I can see it in the stars. You There's, can have it. <laughs> I mean, he had every nail on the head. Uh, if you come to Auburn, you're going to play. If you go to Alabama, you're going to have to wait to play. It's as simple as that. Uh Nick Saban never has been the one to really kind of put the hand, put the keys to the, to the team and to a freshman. I don't even think Julio Jones really played. I hate well, he didn't play that much as a freshman, but freshmen don't get the recognition at Alabama as much, unless you're like ridiculous, like Caleb Down, Downs was this past year. But yeah, Connor, shout class out to him. AU class of 34, or whatever he is, he's going to have a good time. Yeah, he's gonna really enjoy Auburn University in in twenty thirty or whenever he plans on going there and make me feel really old because I'll be thirty years old whenever that's going on. Yikes! So, cool. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Connor, shout out to Ryan Williams uh, for even having a live stream with Eugene Asante and uh, J- J- Jalen Simpson. What's a bigger troll job? It, it just say if, if it's different ends of the spectrum. Like Ryan Williams still committed to Alabama doing a live stream with Auburn players or Perry Thompson still committed to Auburn, but putting Alabama in some of his graphics and stuff. I think, I think Perry Thompson strictly for the fact that he was Bama first and has come over to Auburn. And if he flipped back, I think that would really, I think that's the, the cherry on top is him just going back and forth and back and forth and still considering both. I couldn't. I couldn't imagine someone recruiting to a team for months and then flipping on that team right away. Yeah, the way Perry Thompson makes it seem, it's like whoever talks to him last is gonna have it. 
which is going to be the Auburn Tigers, who are going to see him before signing day on Sunday, as he will travel from Foley, Alabama, all the way up to Auburn University, as the Auburn Tigers take on the USC Trojans on Sunday. But more about that game in just a few few minutes. But yeah, Perry Thompson, Cam Coleman, both going to be in Auburn on Sunday for that basketball game. Packed house, packed environment. If you didn't know, if you live under a rock, Bronny James is going to be in the arena. Woo! So tickets have been sold out since they were opened. LeBron might show up. So if if you find a way to get into Neville Arena for, for Auburn USC, you are going to see one heck of an environment that probably rivals that of Pearlville. Yeah, Bruce Pearl talked about that tonight at the press conference. Um, apparently, standing room tickets are going for 150 bucks right now. Lower bowl, 343 um, Yikes. Yeah, so if you're an Auburn student, I would suggest getting there at around 7 o'clock p.m. Saturday evening. Or, no, 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 7 a.m. Saturday morning. <laughs> get your tent. Get ready. It's going to be a long, long, long night unless they fix Pearlville. Did it get rid of it? Got renovations done after we left. Eh, kind of. It's pretty were, much the they same. Were, they were showing movies. I don't was, think they're going to Pearlville simply because the, the students aren't in town. The students are gone. But I know a lot of people will be making the trip back um, to campus for this. I, I must say, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a packed student section. It's going to be a packed stadium, packed everything. Bring your tents, bring your sleeping bags, bring two extra layers because it's going to be winter doing this. And speaking from experience, for from taking on the original Pearlville, Colin, I don't believe you were you were you part I was of that. There. I was there. I left and came back and got standing room in the morning. Great, great idea for me. I had like great seats. Um, just walked right in. Um, but it was cold. It was cold that night. I, you left and came. I hate you. I hate yeah. you. <laughs> I, I know your story. I, I got off work at nine, got home, took a shower, took a nice warm shower too. It was a nice warm shower. Put on two layers of clothes, put on one layer of socks. So there was a, was- there was a, there was a good three hour period where I was, I was going to take off my, shoe and my toes were going to fall off from the from the cold that's where i was at i've never regretted not wearing an extra pair of socks in my life uh but yeah students out there though if it's not cold enjoy yourselves it's gonna be a fun time uh you and the rest of your colony that is going to migrate outside of Nova arena that morning prior colin i believe you're gonna be, are you gonna be working the game yeah i will be filming for student student news i'll be right there on the court and, and I will get be, there a, like a couple hours before the game starts. After you slept in your nice warm bed, in your uh, nice comfy bed, away from the, the wrench that is <laughs> just deranged students sitting outside for 12 hours. But with that, uh, yeah, back to the transfer portal for just two seconds. And we're going to get into the 2024 schedule that got announced just a few hours ago. Uh, some quarterbacks have gone off of the big board as Tyler Van Dyke has transferred to Wisconsin. Grayson McCall, a Auburn target, has announced that he is transferring to NC State. Riley Leonard has done the most shocking thing ever and has gone to Notre Dame. That is sarcasm. But we also have two more guys added to this list. I added DJ Ungelele to the list. Uh, he wasn't added before. He, tra- he transferred out like a few weeks ago or a week or so ago now. But I added him to the list. And now. Texas quarterback Malik Murphy has announced his intentions to enter the portal. Uh, I don't know if it's following the season so he can get a ring, uh, but he is going to enter the transfer portal. And Auburn fans everywhere are pretty dead set on the fact that they're going to be getting Malik Murphy. He's he's now like the fan favorite after Grayson McCall and Riley Leonard have all disappeared. Yeah, I had never heard of him up until uh, he put his name in the portal and I saw a little bit about him. Um but the more important thing is, did you just say Texas is getting rings? Maybe. Oh. I got a root for somebody, and it's not going to be anybody on the other side of that, uh, side of that bracket. So I think Texas beats, beats Washington. 
But yeah, I, you know, if they win, he's going to get a ring. Uh, I am also on the have. This is not me knowing anything in particular. Uh, I believe Cam Ward is out of the picture. I think that he is going to a Florida school, being either Tallahassee for Florida State or the Miami Hurricanes of Miami. Uh, Auburn's out of the picture. I think it was he asked for too much money, and Auburn wasn't willing to pay that much. Pay two million dollars for a one-year rental. Uh, can't really blame Auburn for that. And how much downside do you really have from getting Peyton Thorne another year? I don't know. It's not. It's not the number one thing I want on my list is is having Peyton Thorne back for another year. Um, if I if I've said it once, I'll say it again. He is a great court, not a great quarterback. He is a <laughs> solid quarterback. Um, he just won't win you any games. And I'm looking for a guy that can come in and win some games, especially with the schedule. And I, I know a lot of people talk about Malik Murphy alongside that category. And I with the with what have we seen already of Malik Murphy? I don't know if you actually get a true improvement from Peyton Thorne as a from a quarterback standpoint, because I think you're just getting another, I don't want to say another Robbie Ashford, but you're getting a guy who is a proven runner, but as a, as a dual threat guy, he's not really there yet. And Lake Murphy, uh, there were a lot of games where he struggled at Texas whenever they were playing teams that they shouldn't have been struggling against whenever Quinn Ewers went out. I just don't think Auburn fans understand the fact that if Auburn wants to get a transport a quarterback right now, it's gotta be someone who's a home run. It's got to be someone who you know right away is going to get you win you games. And right now, as it stands, without a transport of quarterback, Auburn's going to be going into this spring practice session with four different quarterbacks. Because Walker White's going to get his opportunity, quote unquote, to play with the play with the ones, just to see what he can do. Then you have, of course, holding the big boys. You have Holden Garner. Then you have Peyton Thorne returning. And we have the guy's jersey who's behind me. Robbie Ashford is still going to be here for the spring. I'm not saying anything. I know the Robbie Ashford guy. But you're going to have four quarterbacks who are going to be practicing for trying to turn win a starting job. And honestly, I would rather spend the money and build around Connor Liu and build a good offensive line and then build around, I don't know, the quarterback. And then if you have anybody left over, sure, spin it on the quarterback that you think is going to win you games. But at that point, you're going to have the money or the time to get a star-studded guy. If Hugh Freeze is the quarterback developer that we know he is and that he can be and that, again, like he's proven to be, why not give Peyton Thorne another shot? If you, if you can know. develop him. I don't know. I I just heard that that Robbie Ashford's going to win the win the quarterback battle in the spring and not transfer and then lead Auburn to to many victories. That's what I heard. I mean, I'm not against this. I do think I I think that Robbie Ashford's going to give it his all in a in a quarterback battle. Even though I believe that he's gone either way. I think when the spring when the spring ends, he's he's out. But he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that we that everyone sees that he's a good quarterback that you're going to see he has the potential that you're going to see that someone's going to get lucky to pick him up in the portal that's we're going to see Robbie Ashford and I and if you don't get a portal guy I think you increase the chances of having Holden Gurner stay another year even if it's behind Peyton Thorne because I think Holden Gurner is the only guy who coming in from coming into the next year who can battle out with Peyton Thorne and either take the job from him or develop enough to be the guy in 2025 and then give Walker White another year to kind of be more developed in the system. Even though I don't think that's what Albert fans are going to want to see. They're probably going to want to see Walker White in 2025 right away just because he's just been so hyped up as not only a quarterback, but as a recruiter uh, for Auburn. Uh, but quarterbacks are going to be weird. I cannot wait to spend another six months talking about who we think is going to start at quarterback. Uh, so I'm kind of trying to avoid the whole like getting a transport of quarterback for a little bit <laughs> because I don't want – last time we got lucky and it only lasted until like – it started in what, I think March, April-ish yeah. when, when Thorne committed. 
Well, that's like, hold off on it. That way you don't have to talk about that for eight months instead of like the four months. We had a good summer of fun with it. Yeah, Peyton Thorne, Peyton Thorne, <laughs> Peyton Thorne. Who wins between Peyton Thorne and Robbie Asher? Is Holden Garner the best quarterback we have on the team? That that was the level of of content we were at when Peyton Thorne announced. I'm, I would say, I want to give, I want to give Hugh Freeze's chance to develop a quarterback. If he can turn Peyton Thorne around, because Peyton Thorne played a good brand of football, the to round ra- to round out the season. Peyton Thorne never lost any games to round out the season. The team around him was pretty bad, especially the New Mexico State game. It's all about can Hugh Freeze find even a lowercase X factor from Peyton Thorne just to find a way for him to be consistent enough to win you games. Because as we talk about, this 2024 schedule that we're going to get into right now isn't ridiculously hard like this year's was. I think this is a way more favorable schedule than last than this past year's. Especially with the fact that you were going into a season where there's no more divisions. And now you have eight home games and four away. But sadly, your three out of your four away games are really, really, really difficult. But to round it, we're gonna go one by one, Colin. One by one. I want you to get, we're going to give a confidence level. I say from one to 10 on how likely Auburn is to win that game right now. Way too early, way, way too early, two ways into the season. So starting off week one, you got your cupcake game, Alabama, A&M. 10. <laughs> to 10. 10. Huge, huge, huge 10. Week two. I don't think we talk about that game. Week two, September seventh, Auburn is going to play the Cal Golden Bears in Auburn, Alabama. Yeah, that's like a like a nine. I guess if if A and M's a ten, they're a nine. I feel pretty confident in that. Um, I'll give I'll, I'll give I'll give it an eight. Give it an eight. Okay. Yeah, Cal Cal's played pretty good the, to round to end of their season. I don't know how many of those players are actually going to stay around. Going into next year, if Jaden Ott stays, that's an issue. I don't know if he's even thought about entering the portal yet or draft, whichever one he might go to. But Jaden Ott's ridiculous. I will say, my if they if they announced the times, which I don't think they did as well for the first two games, they no. should. This would be hilarious if Auburn gave this the most like central time level time, like kickoff time. Like just mess mess them up. Like Auburn had to, we had to stay up until one o'clock in the morning to watch Auburn Cal. We should make them have to get up very early. This should be an eleven a.m. kick. Yeah. So then they're having to get up at nine. Yeah. Having their morning coffee, watching the game. No, man. I won't. I won't revenge for having to stay up until one o'clock in the morning. To it plus the live stream we did afterwards with the war reporter. Just add into it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'll give it a solid eight. Uh, week three, a game that could have been way more fun had a certain former Auburn and Boise State coach had gotten hired here. Week three, Auburn takes on the New Mexico Lobos. I don't know. <laughs> I guess if I, I guess if I said nine for Cal, I probably should say nine for New Mexico. But n- these New Mexico teams got me, <laughs> got me feeling some sort of way. So I'm gonna say eight. I'm I'm gonna say ten. It's fair. That's a that's 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 more than fair. It should be fair, but there's no way it happens again, right? And you better hope not. <laughs> there's no way. It just doesn't happen again. If both New Mexico D1 teams kick our ass, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> uh, quite frankly, I will hate that state for the rest of my life. I'll have a personal vendetta against anyone from New Mexico. Al- Are you from Albuquerque? Forget that. Mm-mm. I was going to say, Albuquerque because my least favorite town in the in the entire country. Right right above uh, Tuscaloosa. Uh, week four, Auburn starts SEC play as they, enter, or as they welcome the Arkansas Razorbacks into Jordan Hare Stadium. 
Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say eight, the same level as New Mexico. I'm gonna give it a nine. They lost KJ. Their their coach is a dead man walking. Yeah, like is he fired like by week four? What happens? If he walks in the Jordan Harris Stadium and gets his butt kicked again, there's no way they put him back on the bus. So you're you're just you don't think? No, and he can apply to be a to be a, a offensive line analyst for Auburn <laughs> Auburn University. It works you know out. He, he'd probably be pretty good at that. Uh, this is profession. Uh, yeah, that's what he was at Georgia. Uh, week five, it starts to get interesting, Colin. Mm-hmm. Week five, September twenty eighth, the Auburn Tigers welcome in another SEC foe, a brand new SEC foe. In the Oklahoma Sooners. So I'm going to say a six here. Their a first six. SEC road game. Um, I, th- I think that probably on paper they, they outmatch us a little bit. Um, but coming into Jordan-Hare, your first, first road game in the conference, I don't think it's going to be easy on them. I will say that going to this year, Oklahoma is going to have a true freshman or I guess not two freshmen more, probably a redshirt freshman at quarterback and Jackson Arnold. Uh, it's gonna that that game's gonna be if I if I had to guess like the best environment or the best like if I had to choose a game for it to be the first night game of the season, that's where I want it to be. Agreed. Going to, going to this game, o, OU's coming off of playing Temple, Houston, Tulane, and then playing Tennessee in uh in Norman. So this is gonna be their yeah, like you said, their first actual away environment uh in two weeks before they play Texas as well. Uh I I this this is gonna be the first game I'm gonna look at and this is a toss up. I'm gonna I'm straight up just give this one a five. Uh I just I wanna say Auburn's good enough. If if I had to, I'd probably say give Auburn the lean just because it's in Jordan Stadium and Auburn's in year two. And I think Auburn's better off with their coach than Brent Venables is, uh, at OU. Uh, solid five. Ooh, excuse me. I just, I just need to know more about OU's roster at that point. And now Auburn takes their first away game of the season in week six as they will travel to Athens, Georgia to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Are we gonna be mad if I say one? Uh, no. no. I was probably gonna say two, or I was probably gonna say two. I was thinking about giving it a two, but I don't know. I just don't see it. Not at Sanford. It, it it's bad that we're. I really hope that this game does not end up like most games in that stadium do. I really need Auburn to at least make this game competitive. Hey, twenty twenty five, baby. Maybe, maybe then. 2025, we don't even know if Auburn and Georgia are going to play again in 2025. That's so true. I hate that. That's he's got to fix this because I still think it's just make it messed two. up. Make it just make it two permanent opponents. That's all you got to do. Give us Alabama and Georgia. We'll take the having the hardest schedule every freaking year. Especially if there's no it. divisions. It's like if we're not going to be divided anyway, why can't we have two permanent opponents? <laughs> and I will say, it is weird looking at the schedule now that we're halfway through the halfway through it. It's weird looking at the schedule and not seeing a single team from Mississippi. I or think LSU. It's, it's weird. We'll we'll get into it, but it's weird playing two teams from the East back to back. You're right because Auburn goes, Auburn goes into their bye week as they will prepare to take on a Missouri Tiger team that's fresh off of one of their best seasons since 2014, I believe. Uh, and they take this game to Columbia, Missouri. Uh, four. <laughs> I, I'm going to side with you on that as well. I think this is the toughest two-game stretch the, of the season uh, for Auburn. Uh, you go go to Georgia, then you go to Missouri. Missouri, I think, is going to be a team that's going to keep their winning ways alive just because I think Drinkwitz is the dude. Uh, four, I completely agree. 
Uh, Auburn should have the same amount of talent, but is the coaching prestige the same for this game? And week nine, Auburn is going up on their travel miles because they are going up to Lexington, Kentucky to take on the Kentucky Wildcats for week nine. But they're really just touring the East with Georgia, Missouri, Kentucky, Vandy. It's crazy. I don't like it at all. That's an but... interesting game because this is going to be a potentially Peyton Thorne versus Brock Vandegriff matchup. That's gross. <laughs> That's so <laughs> gross. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a five. I think this one's a toss up, especially after your your previous two games. Like you said, this is a very hard point in our schedule. Um, I will say it does. It does. Fine. Difficulty does go downhill a little bit. Uh, I I think I'm gonna give this one a six. I don't think Kentucky's in a great place right now. Uh, they're mm-hmm. losing a lot of good players. They're losing Raymond Davis, uh, who actually balled out, uh, leaving coming from Vanderbilt. Uh, I like I like Mark Stoops, and make sure I didn't say Bob. I like Mark Stoops a lot. I just think it, they're probably on a little d- bit of a downward trend. He might pull a Matt Campbell. He's probably going to wish he had left for Texas A&M whenever he had the chance. Uh, but then back to home games for Week Ten as Vanderbilt. Auburn North Campus travels to the South Campus to take, or Main Campus, I presume, would be the actual terminology for that, to take on the Auburn Tigers. So Auburn versus Vanderbilt, round two. Um, nine. <laughs> this is around the same level as Alabama, AM, New Mexico, and Arkansas. I mean, this is like a, probably, this is probably a 10. They're, they're losing two quarterbacks, two receivers. I believe they're running back and some defenders. This team is going to be bare bones. This team is not going to have a lot of legs to stand on or a lot of players to stop those, to stop anybody from running all over them. Uh, Yeah, this is going to be a big, big win. Going to Auburn's second bye week of the year to take on, and they're going to need the extra week to prepare Mm -hmm. for the University of Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. I don't. I don't even know. I don't know how to. I don't know how to judge this one. Like we need. We do need the bye week. The bye week is essential because obviously we have to prepare for these non-con cupcake games at the end of the season. We just do. We didn't prepare well this season. We're we're taking notes. We're putting a bye week before <laughs> our non-con game. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say nine. Okay. There's a world. There's a world that we lose this. I didn't. I, you you would have asked me that two months ago. I'd have told you there's not. But here we are. I'm gonna say ten because we're joking about this mostly. <laughs> mostly, mostly. Oh. ULM is not New Mexico State. <laughs> <laughs> New Mexico State at least played for their conference title. ULM is not going to do that, or did not do that. They're not going to do that. They're not a they're they're not a program they can build off of picking up transfers. Like New Mexico State did. Come on, guys! It's not New Mexico State, right? Oh, That's like what a crazy comparison we have to make. <laughs> As, they're not are, they're not hot like New Mexico State was hot. There, these are dark times. Uh, week 13, right after taking on the powerhouse that is ULM, we're going to take on the newly uh, hired Mike Elko and his Texas A&M Aggies in Jordan Hare Stadium. Seven. I like that. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'll rock with you there. Seven. Uh, definitely a team that's going to look a lot different than it did last year. I uh, don't know if the quarterback situation is going to still remain. I think Connor Wegman still remains as a quarter as a quarterback, uh, but a lot of players are entering the portal from Texas A&M, and I don't know how many of those they've actually retained uh, from that giant from that awesome class that they paid for uh, under Jimbo Fisher. And then rounding out the 2024 season is you guessed it, the Iron Bowl on November 30th. This game is of course going to be played in. That horrendously, horrendously looking, absolutely awful stadium in Tuscaloosa. 
Can I, can we do like half numbers? Can I give like a like a two and a half? <laughs> a two and a half. Well, yeah, you gave Georgia a two, but like we're gonna we're gonna do better than Georgia. <laughs> but like then you're thinking three, and I'm like that's a thirty percent chance at a win. I don't know if we're winning three out of ten. I'll give it a three. Okay, two and a half and a three. That's that's a nice. Little dichotomy. We win one out of four. This, if this game, I hate that it's every year. It's we're going to Georgia and to Alabama, and they're coming here the next year. Why can't it be away home, home away, away home, home away? Because that'd make too much sense. It's not going to happen anymore. Like you said, we're not playing Georgia every year, so we'll we'll see Georgia. You know, in three, four years on the schedule. So my biggest Bye. gripe, my biggest gripe with these new schedules. Yeah, I think it's cool that we're gonna be able to filter through the entire SEC in a couple of years. I want to play LSU. That does L- that does feel like it's missing more so than Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Cause I know you already mentioned them, but yeah, I mean, if the Mississippi schools aren't on the same level of like rivals that LSU, Georgia, and Bama are. Like I go, I go into every year, and I'm like the most important. The only this is like the different year. I picked Ole Miss to be like a huge game this year because Hugh Freeze coached at Ole Miss, and it's like his like revenge game. If they just, the same schedule for year two, my top three are going to be Bama, Georgia, LSU. Hmm. I just think it's kind of gross to even put LSU in the same the same conversation as Bama and Georgia. They're, they're, they're their third biggest rival. And then you get to like old heads that will say Florida and Tennessee, which not really anymore. Uh, then you get to like the Ole Miss and Mississippi State. So even though I don't really count those two as like rivals, we're just a division opponents. Mm-hmm. We just kind of play each other. Not anymore. Not anymore. We'll play them, we'll probably play them next year, I presume. But at least one yet. of them. If you had to give a record, for how you think Auburn's going to perform in 2024. You're way, way too early. Colin Byersdorf prediction for 2024. What would it be? I want to say eight and four. And I want to say eight and four. Your losses being Georgia, Missouri, Alabama. I think and... I think you I think you lose Bama, Georgia, Missouri. And you find another way to lose somewhere, whether that's Oklahoma or, or Texas A&M or shit, <laughs> ULM. <laughs> you, I think you're just going to drop one of those. I think that's the the nature of the beast. I say, if I were to book for a little bit, please do. <laughs> I would say nine and three is not out of the question. No, for sure, it's definitely on the table, but. But I think eight and four is the most reasonable one. I think you lose. Sadly, I think you lose three in a row. I think you used lose to OU, Georgia, and Missouri. Which I will say, Auburn fans on Twitter, be prepared for the week of September twenty eighth. Be prepared. Wake me up when because September ends. Because if you're not huge on Twitter, or no other fan bases on Twitter. Oklahoma fans are very loud. Extremely loud. And it'd be great to win. I just don't know if Auburn can right now. Uh, but year three, year four, I'll give it to them. Uh, but yeah, I think eight and four is probably going to be my pick. Uh, OU, Georgia, Missouri, Alabama. And I will say it would suck but to go one for one and three in your away games but that's probably if if someone else has a harder away schedule than that i would like to see it because the because just having those four teams and three of them being really good because george is going to be ranked like top five bam is going to be ranked top five missouri is going to be top 15 without a doubt in my mind unless they just don't work out like they like I presume they will. It doesn't help that they're all in a row either. Yeah, like having 
have not not having a bye week for Georgia sucks. I I would rather have our bye week before Georgia than before Missouri. And I'd rather have the bye week before Alabama than before ULM. Or putting it after ULM. Nah, man, we listen. We need it. I would just rather have the bye week before tougher games. And I, I know I'm saying Missouri's good. I'd rather be extra prepared for Georgia and Sanford. I don't know. Yeah, if I had to give a prediction, eight and four is where I stand. I kind of understand the seven and five uh, predictions, but I don't think losing seven games is going to be like fire, fire Hugh Freeze level stuff. I think you'll see some people uh, ringing that bell, but they'll yeah, be wrong. Auburn, Auburn didn't put up 50 points for Alabama a and It's fire Hugh Freeze. We didn't approve. We didn't put up 85 on Alabama a If you want to fire Hugh Freeze after year two, shut up. I agree. If I he goes, I'll... if if he goes like two and ten, sure. Three and nine, eh, sure. Five and seven, no. Five and seven and up, no. If he only wins, if he only wins his out, out of conference games, there's an issue with losing to Arkansas and Vanderbilt in the same year. I will say, <laughs> something's got to be done about that. Listen, Arkansas. Arkansas saved Sam Pittman from the from the the chopping block this year, and now Sam Pittman's going to win them a national championship. So that <laughs> might be the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> Sam Pittman, man, he's Sam he Pittman knows, being he knows ball. I uh, meatballs, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> he, yeah, he knows him pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, that's all in 2024 schedule. Uh, it's it's going to be a fun year. Uh, this is a lot of great games. I definitely really want to go to the Auburn Oklahoma game. Uh, if I had a wish list, I'd be on that list for sure. Uh, before we get to basketball, uh, men's, women's, and some of the other sports sprinkled around. Uh, Colin, how you feeling? It's late, man. I'm I'm just I'm just kind of feeling a little loopy. Feeling loopy, man. Uh, you know what? That's a great feeling to feel because if you want to show it off some more, kind of like whenever you're on Facebook, you kind of put like how you're feeling, you just broadcast to the world. You can broadcast to the world that you're feeling loopy by getting your own feeling loopy t-shirt off of the warpoor.com. Go to their shop. It's on the first page right when you open it. It'll be right there looking at you. It comes in five different color ways. Navy, Heather Navy, black, or I think it's, yeah, Heather, Heather black. There we go. And midnight, Heather gray. And just normal black. Uh, these shirts are the most comfortable shirt you're ever going to own. So get your own today and hope and hopefully get it in time for the holiday season. It is and as again, holiday season. Get it for your loved ones, get it for your dog, get it for any newborns that might want one. You know, spread the love. Tell the world how your family is feeling on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Spend it with your families while you're all wearing your college loop war poor branded feeling loopy t-shirts and if you have a family of five you get all five colorways it'll be a great yes. family photos you can be color coded that's, that's great family photos right there that's what everybody wants to see you and your feeling loopy t-shirts last today. second christmas card all of you in the college loop merch in front of the tree <laughs> and believe me it, if you're if you're watching this and you're looking for something to ask for santa ask for a war poor t-shirt they got it in the shop. Get you one. The elves can make one. <laughs> but now to move on to basketball, uh, the Auburn Tigers took on the UNC Asheville, whatever they are, Bulldogs. Probably could have threw a dart into a room and hit a and hit that mascot. <laughs> uh, Eighty-seven to sixty-two in a game that was really taken over. By Trey Donaldson and Chad Baker Mazzaro both put up the only double digit point different uh, totals of the game. Trey Donaldson put up 15, shooting six for eight from the field, over two from the three from the three point line, three for four from the three point line. Also dished out two assists as well. And the CBM put up 11 points, got seven rebounds, an assist, a block, and Chad Baker Mazzara, zero fouls. Yeah, that's something you want to see, especially. That's something that he needs to be working on. And as you can see, 
uh, he was doing it. Granted, first half these refs were calling nothing. It was <laughs> it was a slugfest, but they tightened the ship up a little bit heading into the second half. Um, Bacon Rosara also went three for three from beyond the arc. I don't know if you you said that it was great to see him shooting well from beyond the arc. Um, rest of the team uh, left a little bit to be desired in that regard. But um, they were scoring points in other ways. Um, in transition, they played pretty well. Um, really just played well as a team. All 11 scholarship players had four or more points. So you hear Bruce Pearl has continuously preached that he, we have 10, 10 guys that could start. Um, and I think that's just kind of proven his point there. Yeah, and also can't go without mentioning the fact that Cheney Johnson put up eight points in this game uh and four fouls too so he, he kept his foul numbers up but doubled or had eight more points than he did last game so huge ups to have had also had four rebounds two assists and a block he also had a dunk as well he did have a dunk that dunk was pretty nice actually <laughs> still waiting for him to con- continuously get better and hopefully see a nice cheney johnson game just where he absolutely blows up an uh, SEC play is what I'm hoping I, for. I was hoping it'd be this one, a little, little back to Huntsville homecoming. Um, Denver Jones kind of had that. Apparently he played a lot of high school ball in and around the Huntsville area. He had a bunch of family and friends at the game. And when we were doing starting lineups, his name got called, and it was obviously louder than, than anyone else on our starting <laughs> lineup. So the Huntsville crowd was big Denver Jones fan. So that was cool. And uh, for, shooting behind the arc, uh, 7 for 21 of the team, 33% from, again, behind the arc. Uh, I mean, this team is just going to throw up threes. Uh, Denver Jones and Holloway combined for 2 for 9 uh, from behind the arc, and those are your two best three-point shooters. But as you mentioned, Chad Baker went up 3 for 3. But huge ups to the free throw shooting, finishing 80% from the free throw line. Hallelujah. Yeah. Didn't get there a lot, 12 or 15, but you definitely will, will take those 12. If you're shooting 80%, you're shooting 80%. Yeah. Katie Johnson, Trey Donaldson, and Janai Broom also are the ones that missed those three. Janai Broom, I want to say for the first time all season, but I don't know the stats off the top of my head. Finished above 50% from the free throw line in a game. That's probably pretty close to being true. 66%. Oh. Let's go. That's improvement. At a boy, man. <laughs> yeah. Huge win for the Auburn Tigers as they prepare for their Sunday night game against the USC Trojans. Or it's Sunday night, Sunday afternoon game against the, the USC Trojans. The Trojans? USC? Sure, it's not the Brawny Juniors, man. USC oh, Bronny dude, James? you're right. I forgot. I forgot that no one else on this team matters outside of Bronny James. I, who else is on the team? Uh, uh, Bryce. The Bronny James is for Bryce uh, James. I don't think Bryce is there yet. Uh, but it's weird. Bronny doesn't dude, lead a single. I'm out here season. balling like I'm Bronny and Bryce, man. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you if you missed out on this, uh, yeah, Bronny James is going to be in Neville Arena on Sunday. Uh, really shouting out a guy who's only played one game all year in a loss to Long Beach where he put up a astounding four points. Uh, he had a good chase down block, though. You forget that, Dylan Lark. I do not because Bleacher Report told me five times that he had a block. <laughs> you don't know how many times I saw the like father, like son. Uh, but yeah, uh, big uh, key to this game is not Bronny James. <laughs> It is Boogie Ellis. Uh, going to this game, he's averaging 21 points, four rebounds, three assists, and one steal, 1.6 steals a game. Uh, shooting 46% beyond the arc, 76% from the free throw line. Uh, a guy that we had to deal with a lot last year. Uh, he had a Boogie Ellis had a huge game against Auburn when they played in Los Angeles. A uh, six foot three, 190 pound senior point guard uh, who was an absolute dog. Who's that? Bronny's teammate? Uh, Boogie Ellis. Oh, yeah. Bronny's teammate? Yeah, Bronny's teammate. Bronny's teammate, Boogie Ellis. This is going to be an ongoing joke. I will say, I don't want to call myself a LeBron James hater, but 
I am a disliker of <laughs> LeBron James fans. Nothing would bring me more joy to see a player along the lines of Dylan Cardwell knock, either dunk on, or block the crap out of a Bronny James shot. If if Dylan Cardwell dunks on Bronny James, I think we will genuinely blow the roof off of Neville Arena. I think that will be the <laughs> loudest I have ever heard Neville get is if it, Cardwell just yams it on him. Like, that place will explode. Dylan Cardwell will get a technical. He might get thrown out the game, but it's going to be fun no ESPN, matter what. ESPN is going to blacklist him for being on TV. That's what's going to happen. It just, just for he might deserve it. He might deserve it. <laughs> But yeah, of course, this game is going to be on Sunday at 12 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. And again, don't let this game fool anybody. This this is going to be a game where I'm going to need Auburn to stay within their own head. Bronny's the talking point of the of the week about this game. Bronny's not an X factor on this on this team yet. He he's played one game, got four points. I hope he's healthy. I hope he's fully healthy. I would love it. I I wish him the best of luck in in his health because I know he had a very horrific. Uh, uh, I think it was a heart attack, I believe. Yeah, cardiac arrest. Um, yeah. So I hope he's doing fine. It would just really be funny if he just did not play well against Tom Burton. Yeah. We're lucky that he's playing basketball, period. In, yeah. Like ever and again in his entire life. Yeah. Big ups um, to him. Glad he's healthy. I really hope he does not score a single point in Neville Arena. <laughs> yeah. In front of his dad in the world. <laughs> yeah, I hope his dad is – dude, if, if LeBron comes, if LeBron comes and he loses again, are we going to say LeBron's like a curse? Like he's 0-2 and watching Bronny play in, at the collegiate level. <laughs> I will say uh, – I don't want to say this without like knowing. Uh, there are a lot of players on this team Auburn needs to be worried about outside of Bronny James. Again, Boogie Ellis, Isaiah Collier, and Kobe Johnson are all players averaging double-digit figures. And – Again, Bronny, don't don't let this game be decided by Bronny James. This game is not going to be highly watched. Be, it's going it's going to be watched by a lot of people because of Bronny James, but he is not going to be an X factor in this game. Believe me when I say that. But Colin, if you want to give a score prediction for this game, I would love to hear it. Yeah, um, I want to say eighty-seven seventy-eight Auburn. I like it. Because we're also, I also meant to, meant to mention USC is not very good this year. <laughs> They're not very good. Five and four record. Somehow first in the Pac 12, but also <sighs> everyone, every, I think everyone's first in the conference. I was going to say it because they have not played anyone yet. You're going to go off record. Come on. How you, Van- how, listen, how are you going to, how are you going to even win the Pac 12? That doesn't exist in football anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I'm also going to rock with Auburn here. I think they're the better team all around. Uh, way more balanced than USC is. They have a lot of players who are playing 30 minutes a game. Uh, give me Auburn 85-72. I think Auburn wins by double digits in Neville Arena. Uh, but again, all y'all go into that game. Enjoy your camping trip outside of Neville Arena. Uh, keep Pearlville safe. <laughs> I need someone to start a bit with a like a like a Batman in, in Pearlville. Uh, we can't bring bring back Auburn Batman. You remember Auburn Batman from when we were students, like young, the guy who would dress up like Batman and hang out downtown and take pictures with the drunks. I do not remember that. You don't remember that? That was a big part <laughs> of my freshman year. Uh, your freshman year was 2019? 2020. Right? 2020. Oh, well, then yeah, no one. That year to the count. <laughs> Batman was patrolling the streets, man. He was keeping us safe from the virus and everything. Well, <laughs> sure. Women's basketball. <laughs> uh, they took on the Alabama State Lady Hornets last night, winning in a huge margin of 94 to 37. Held every single score on Alabama State under double digits. And Oscar Scott Grayson put up. 24 points and I'm just trying to remember everybody's Taylor Collins put up 17 and of course to round it out Celia Sunbain put up 11 points and then you had some other points kind of sprinkled around as well as McKenna Eddings put up the last double digit points of the game and McKenna Eddings getting 10 points Savannah Scott 
eight points as well. Not enough for not a lot of rebounds, but it also doesn't seem like uh, so Alabama State put up a lot of shots that uh, were reboundable. I believe would be the word. Uh, Alabama State shot thirty three percent from the field, not from the three point line, from the field. And hey, that's a third. Yeah, that's <laughs> one every three, baby. They're they're trying. And also a huge storyline from this game is the fact that Auburn put up a program record 28 steals in the game that was locked down by Carson McFadden, who got two of those to get Auburn to 28. So a huge game for Auburn was basketball. You took you played a team who was 0 7 and you beat the crap out of them. That's all you were asked to do in terms of that. And Auburn will be back in action on the 16th which I believe is Saturday. There we go. Saturday, Neville Arena, 2 o'clock p.m. So if you're in town for the weekend, this is going to be a fun weekend for Auburn Athletics. Can't lie. You can go watch Auburn Women's Basketball take on Norfolk State and absolutely kill them. You can go watch, as I'm about to get to right now, a Friday, Auburn Gymnastics has their preview meet at 7 o'clock, some standard time. Go. I'm going to be there. Because I love gymnastics. My girlfriend also loves gymnastics. She's going to be there as well. And I'm trying to bring... It's going to be a whole Lark family vacation in Neville Arena for Auburn, the Auburn preview meet. How many Larks? How many Larks? As far as I know, my mom and my little sister are coming. I don't know if my dad is. That's at least three Larks. Three Larks. Girlfriend. Three Larks in one, in one arena. Uh, but if you're going and you see me, shout out. Uh, shout me out. Uh, I'll I'll talk to you about whatever. Uh, take a picture with him. Take a picture yeah. with him. That'll that'll make his family really, <laughs> really think this is crazy. Please, <laughs> if you see Dylan Lark at the gymnastics preview meet, ask to take a photo. Yeah, boost my ego some more. That, that'd be a I'm great idea. You. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, on the rundown, we got baseball. Uh, first baseball news tidbit in a hot minute as Ike Irish has been named a top 10 prospect in the next MLB draft, which I believe is 2024. When's MLB draft again? It's like the it's, it's, like, it's like in a while. September? It's like borderline after the season's over. It's the not yeah. for a minute. I'm trying to remember. I can't remember exactly when the day exactly is, but it's after June. But yeah, named a top 10 prospect in the MLB draft. Uh, Ike Irish, again, just an absolute powerhouse of a baseball player. is going to make a team very happy one day, but not before he makes us very happy this season. Uh, hopefully hitting like 40 or 50 home runs. Fingers crossed. Uh, just turn those triples into home runs. Or turn those doubles into home runs. Uh, but yeah, with that, Colin, everybody know I love you, find you, and support you. Yeah, just go throw me a follow on a... <laughs> on Twitter, it's at, at Byersdorf Colin. That's B E Y E R S D O R F Colin. Appreciate y'all for uh, sticking in when we get a little loopy a- after hours here. <laughs> oh, it's I, now it's your turn. Yeah, as you probably t- it is 12 o'clock, uh, midnight as we were recording this. So, yeah, if we come off a little tired, that is why. Uh, but we are still here nonetheless. I'm Dylan Lark. I have a tank on Twitter slash X at Y A B O I the tank. Also have an Instagram as well at Dylan Lark at D Y L E N L E R C K. And of course, you have us right here on the College Loot Rich. Like, comment, subscribe. Leave your thoughts. Leave your predictions on who you think Auburn's going to su- uh, surprise everyone and shine, sign on signing day. Of course, we're going to have a live stream on Sunday following the basketball games that are going to go on over the weekend and give other news tidbits as we get ready for early signing day and of course you have some other social medias as well instagram tiktok twitter facebook is there one i'm missing uh no it's all of them. instagram all twitter of them. tiktok facebook. facebook that's the four that's the yeah. core four baby youtube follow all, us on youtube Subscribe. all at the college loop and of course don't forget we are just a mere 300 subscribers away from colin having, having to run a myspace page i didn't forget colin no, that was on you. That was a you thing. You were going to run the MySpace no, page. No, no, it was on me. You were the one running the MySpace page. No, uh, there are a hundred episodes of us saying you were going to be the one to do it. I will. I promise you, I can find one of of you saying when I got to run a MySpace page. No, that's not at all. Uh, it changed as soon as you got hired. So, 
We'll enter the enter the MySpace page, and uh, I believe two hundred and ninety three subscribers. So please subscribe to make Colin run the MySpace. And if you're tired of seeing our face, completely understand it. We have the audio versions as well: Spotify, Podcast, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. But of course, with all of that being said, this has been the College Loop Podcast.